but welcome here to Air Crash Investigator and today I'm going to spend some time on a phenomena or let's call it a helicopter phenomena called ground resonance. All right, but before we carry on, just a reminder that um, I'm working with seams and there's only two things you must remember and that is online and seams and there you can see you can do formation, SMS, night vision school, aircraft investigation and so on and so forth. So when it comes to the ground resonance, um, I, I, I start saying there that, um, you know, that's when the helicopter beats itself to pieces. Well, I should actually have said to death, but let's look at it as a definition. What, are we, what is it that we're talking about, this phenomena? So a ground resonance, I'm reading there, can be defined as being a vibration of large amplitude resulting from a forced or self-induced vibration of a helicopter in contact with, well, or resting on the ground. Okay, so the definition itself I got from the AP3456A, they're talking about in contact or on the ground. Uh, the point is that if the aircraft is solely in the air and not touching the ground or a ship or any hard platform like that, there won't be uh, something called that kind of resonance that we're talking about. In other words, ground resonance literally means that you've got to be in contact with the ground. All right, so uh, what are the causations? Look at the first one. The initial vibration which causes ground resonance can, or, <laughs> can already be present in the road to head. In other words, if we look at the road ahead here, and I'm not saying that this road ahead has got anything wrong with it, it's just an example, but if there's already anything there that will cause the imbalance, but we'll see what imbalances we can talk about. And the center of rotation, and here we go, the center of rotation and the center of gravity must be aligned. Whoa. All right. So with the helicopter, the blades turning at the top, there will be a center of rotation. Now remember, that means that the blades, more than two blades, uh, well, even two blades, but the blades must be equally spaced. Otherwise, there's going to start a wobble in there. But that itself will wait until you get on the ground and then when you make the ground contact, there will be an offset and that wobble will, well, it really acts extremely fast from there, that it deteriorates. Okay, when the centers are not aligned, a wobble starts. Inequality of vibration between the rotor head. All right, now remember your rotor head typically has got vibrations. Uh, let's for a moment say that the typical vibrations that you get would be in the order of about 17 hertz. So, um, you know, if something else on the helicopter, like for instance, the undercarriage or other parts, is not in sync with that, that's where we will get uh, a little bit of a problem. Now, the blades, they must be the same weight we know there. And then here we come to something faulty, drag dampers. Now, what is, uh, just to show quickly, a drag damper, if you carefully look on the blade here, there is the pitch change rod. This is the blade, and here you see a damper. And now that damper, if you look at it, is a lead and lag damper. In other words, this blade running here will try to lead its natural path where it will be in let's say, in um, the correct relationship with the other blade, or it can lag. And that is why we need the drag damper in there. Then uh, just faulty tracking, uh, different path planes. And this is going a little bit deep in now to say that, that listen, if the blade tracking is not correct, the blades are running at, at different heights, that different angle of attacks, there's different drag involved. And that could uh, start a vibration and normally when it's a vibration from the main rotor head, we call it a low frequency uh, vibration 
whereas it's uh, something that comes from the tail rotor, it will be a high frequency vibration normally felt on the rudders. And um, if there's an engine vibration, turbine, you will definitely feel that's also a high frequency vibration. All right, so let's carry on and let's have a look at the different causations. Now, the first one is mishandling of the cyclic stick during landing, which causes the aircraft to bounce from side to side. When we attack the ground and we land skew, but the helicopter can't go and it, the, the imbalance is already there and the helicopter want to do this, then this kind of motion between the head and the body will, and you'll see that a lot of times that the helicopter is, uh, call it, it's floating on the undercarriage. Not in all helicopters, but you'll see that most undercarriages is not rigidly attached to the helicopter. But even in the case where we're looking at the use here, it's got uh, drag dampers and there is a lot of play. And it means that the undercarriage can do funny things while the helicopter stays intact or let's say, in great orientation. If there's a taxi or takeoff run, and we're talking about rough and uneven ground, yes, of course, that will cause a shifting uh, between the rotational center and the center of gravity all the time. Incorrect or unequal tire and oleo pressures. Well, you know, um, although we say a lot, those are the basics, those are the basics. Does it mean that if the uh, tire pressures and the early pressures are perfectly um, within livids and, and, and they're right that you won't get? No, you can still get uh, ground resonance if that imbalance is caused by some or other uh, way that you're mishandling the controls. Uh, there could be a wheel dropping in a hole, uh, uh, so many uh, other things. Uh, they're talking about deplaning troops or let's say if people get out and you, if you are lightly sit, uh, situated on the ground. Now, I must say that I've experienced that before. We just touch down lightly and people climb up. Then the helicopter, because the center of gravity shifts and the center of gravity shifts in relationship to the center of rotation. And when there's the misbalance, that will start the wobble. Now, by now, you would have realized that I'm saying that it's only when you touch the ground. If you're in the air, there might be a high or a low frequency, at least vibration, but it's not going to be something that uh, uh, will get out of hand and uh, the chopper is not going to beat itself to pieces in the air. All right. Yeah, I just mentioned, I just want to clear up here, that we're talking about non-assertive takeoff or touchdown and hard landing with sideway forces. That's obviously the forced one again, and that ties in with the very first one. But let's just talk about what, what do I mean by assertive? One, when one's takeoff, and you'll see in the video clip that during the takeoff, if, if you dawdle at a certain point, there could be, and then the machine wants to wobble, and you take off, and the wobble is gone immediately. In other words, the only way to get rid of the, 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 the misalignment is to get the body in the air and then the body can swing and stay in relationship to the center of the rotation. That's just about as, 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 as well as can do. And I just say there, there is a human factor to this as well. When a wobble or a resonance starts, the first thing that we want to do is, is to throw down a collective pitch shut down and do all those kind of tricks. And unfortunately, that is not the right thing to do. I understand, sometimes you can't, all right? But um, we're gonna talk about that um, after we had a check on the video. Right, with the hat here is a US 300. You can see as it takes off, there's a little bit of a, there's the wobble, and then he pulls it into the air. Exactly the right thing to do. In other words, you've got to be a little bit more assertive with your takeoff should something like this happen. Well, here we've got another view, and 
I am not sure what really happened here, but um, somebody got out on the left-hand side, and the person wants to take off. If you listen to the rotor of the end, you can, well, it just seems to be not enough. But as it takes off, and you can see the resonance starting there, and in no time, it gets out of hand, totally. Well, it did the wrong thing, and that is the result. Absolute uh, tragic. Well, here we can see a squirrel absolutely destroying itself. And that was ground resonance after it landed. It uh, was so severe that the nose of the helicopter, in fact, looks like it just broke off. But so did the tail. And luckily nobody got hurt. The point here is that if there is any kind of imbalance, then um, we've got to do the right thing to avoid total destruction. Well, let's now go on and have a look at the lessons uh, that we can learn and that we can take away. Uh, these are most important. And you never think that you're flying types that's outside the possibility. First of all, just point number one, uh, obviously prevention is better than cure. You always have to take prevention. And the simple thing is during the pre-flight, make sure that the machine, the oleos, everything that you can set, uh, the weight, the balancing the track and balance uh, everything that you can do must be 100 percent right uh, in no other blade strikes in between and stuff like that to do a proper pre-flight but here is the point that we don't necessarily mention in the aerodynamic books but look i say the cyclic position prior to takeoff if you have the cyclic position not nicely in the center and aligned with your disc, I think then you've got a little bit of a problem. And I see a lot of times when people go and land and they go their hand, then the, the hand flops to the right hand side. And uh, the bigger the helicopter, remember the first thing that you do before you take off is what is the cyclic position? It's got to be in the correct position and then we can start feed on in uh, the collective pitch. So the next thing, a training must include rapid takeoffs when such severe vibrations, oscillations are experienced. And I have experienced them actually quite a few times during training because it is just the way that it is. Uh, sometimes we a little bit skew. Uh, nobody is perfect. But as instructor, you've got to have your hands on and you must be able to take off quickly. And the point is that you must teach whoever you are flying with, that once there is this vibration on set, you've got to get airborne. So if you want to get airborne, a lot of people I see when they come and land, down goes the collective and they go to sort of a ground idle position on the RPM. Sorry, you've just missed your spot to immediately take off again. That's why it is highly recommended, not just just not by myself, by those in the know that say that you only wind down the helicopter once you've done your proper landing and you are now shutting down. So don't do it between uh, each and every takeoff. I see a lot of people when they go down, they, they cut immediately. If you pick up um, ground resonance at the wrong <laughs> time, you're not going to be able to recover because the only way to recover is to take off. All right, so this is just the training. Then only close the throttle, I said there, when it's landed. If the aircraft is suitable to fly and the rotor RPM are available, take off immediately. Okay, so this is, this, this is plan A. Rotor RPM should always be maintained uh, in the operating range until the final landing has been completed. And here is the big crux, and I'm going to just put a nota bene there and say, very important. Okay, and then... Let's have a look at the last thing. If the aircraft is not serviceable to fly or rotor RPM are not available, well, this is where we're getting to the toughies. Now, lower the lever, close the throttle and shut down. 
But if you've got a road to break, and many times we haven't got a road to break, but if you have a road to break, just apply that. Don't wait for the RPM to come down to a certain. Apply that road to break even if you do it incrementally. But the quicker that you can get rid of the momentum, the quicker you will get rid of the resonance that will just within seconds increase to something that will destroy the whole helicopter. Well, until next time.